I tattoo <laughs> once a month if I'm fucking lucky. I, yeah. I, I that's taken away from me something that I yeah. fucking love that I put my whole life into, and you're mm. looking forward to the tattoo being finished. I would kill to be in your position, man. I'm gonna stop yeah. from getting pissed, but. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, and what Josh is saying, like if things get rough, <laughs> things get a little tough. And that's when you're gonna fold. Well, then that's why he's saying maybe you ain't cut out for this, right? Brothers and sisters, we can't thank you enough for all your love, your support, and your faithfulness. It's been brought to my attention. If you really want to do something to bless us, to thank us, apparently, simply hitting the like button on YouTube would be more impactful than what I ever knew. Let alone subscribing. To us on YouTube if you're not already. And then over on Spotify and Apple, please leave us a review. All of your listening and your comments to us mean the world to us. Um, and do us a favor and just hit like on YouTube and leave us reviews on Spotify and Apple. And we're going to continue to serve you with our whole heart. Thank you so much. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Hip here coming to you with another episode of the Tattoo Guardians podcast. And this is part two of questions answered from you by us. We got Mike mic'd up so you get to hear him a little bit. You ever wondered what really fucking grinds Joshua's gears? Well, watch to the end. You might find out. So tune in. Hey, brothers. How are you tonight? <laughs> Good. I'm so glad to be back. I like, I really, I'm fucking uh, glad you're back. Yeah, it's, it's always so good to see your faces. I was really wanting to be a part of the last one, and uh, I was—I got a chance to listen to it with my wife, and we've been mentioning people calling in for a while now. You know, yeah. and I was actually kind of wondering what was going on with that. So when I when I started hearing you guys taking these these calls, I was super excited, and I, I got to be honest with you, I loved the show. So I was like super mm. bummed out. I was like, man, I really want to get in on that. You know, uh, just to yeah. you know, just to hear those questions. You know, because I don't know. I mean, they say they're saying you don't know what you don't know. We don't know what they're saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. I know it. That was up to Hip because, you know, I I wanted to hear the questions first. And Hip wanted to roll it sure, and keep yeah. it raw as fuck and it be a surprise and just off the cuff. Yeah, so you that's know. what I'm understanding, right? So you guys did not know if somebody right. was going to call in and fuck with us, try to prank that's us. That's right. That's okay. right. Okay. <laughs> now, see, I'm glad you brought that up because let's say – you know, I, I imagine as we grow and as people keep calling in, we're going to get some fucking trolls. Oh, yeah. So, like, should we let some of those ride just for entertainment purposes? <laughs> right. Well, who knows? And that's all at back end editing. Right. The next, you know, even if we've got more messages, you know, I, I think we're all in agreement upon the idea of seeing what they say before we even can form an opinion on what they just said right right, right. so we'll, we'll figure that out together and josh i'm glad that you're back for more reasons than one just because this is a three-man show uh you're the biggest reason why this show even began and for who knows those listeners that hit you and I, Hip, answered their questions. Who knows how many of them were bummed that you weren't there to hear it sure, and be sure. a part of it, too, you sure. know? Um, now, not one of them. It's a, it's a question for all of us. But who knows? Maybe someone will be like, hey, th well, there was one question that was specific to you, Josh, was on the, that last episode. The, uh, and, and I'm actually shocked to see that you're not covered in glow sticks and wearing UFO pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Fuck no, I was never. I was, let's just get this straight right here on on the air. <laughs> Fuck no, I was never a raver. <laughs> you, know? And, you know, like Matt said, like we were the OGs of that shit. It evolved into something, and raving was not a part of it. So I appreciate the that's feedback. That's right. But yeah, uh, yeah. you got that one wrong, son. <laughs> <laughs> Ixnay on the Aver Ray. Yeah. yeah. Now I will and then say Hip that. Was talking about Go ahead. My uh, our school started back today. My my son started high school today, and everybody, including my son, was wearing the baggiest jeans. Like oh, that stuff's back. Like not the Jenko ridiculous it. jeans, right. but my my son kept on ordering the biggest pants ever. And when I got to pick him up today, I was like, oh shit, this looks like the nineties. Like you know, know so it, maybe man. maybe raving is going to come back. I still won't be part of it. So. <laughs> well. 
I don't know what you mean by it's coming back because I've just always kept wearing baggy. I've just kept you it. Just real, never wear, you, you just kept it, huh? Yeah, I tried the skinny skinny jeans, but it's just. I don't think I've ever seen know. you wear pants. It's always been shorts. Yeah, here here lately, it's it's been a lot of fucking athletic gear. Right, right. Um, now I do like some joggers. That's about as skinny as I'll go. And I, I love I, some again, joggers. I tried like a pair of skinny jeans. I, Matt can pull them off very well. But I don't well, look feel at one like of those hot can. pink babies right there, man. Man, yeah. okay. look at that shit. Okay, rocking the hot <laughs> right. <laughs> now that everybody can pull that off. I'm going to show up next time in hot pinks. But yeah, oh, but yeah. Shit. So uh, yeah, I really am glad to be back, though. And like I said, it was a fun little, a fun little thing to hear. It's just to hear what our audience thinks, you know, you can't tell tone and stuff to over messages generally, you know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, it's right. nice to hear. So, uh, anytime you guys are down with that, um, I'm down, man. Well, we do have uh, some more that we didn't get to. Uh-huh. Isn't that right, Mike? We do. We got a handful more that we haven't gotten to. None of us have heard. Yep. Uh, can, can you pull those up I pretty can't. quickly? Yep. Oh, Josh, shit. You down to I mean, I was. Check gonna, uh, we were going to do that thing where we told the biggest secret of tattooing, but we'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll wait. Let's save that for episode four thirty six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do it. Awesome. Happy so we do day. not. We've not. We've not heard these at all. So here we go. Not a right. damn. Clue. Are, are we even close to a hundred? Uh, I think this uh, is sixty eight. 69? Yeah, we're on our way to 70. Yeah. Oh, and you, Josh, by the way, Mike's mic'd up now, so he can interject at any time. <laughs> Are you guys ready? We're ready. Yeah, Get laid on, Mike. Yeah. So this is Timmy Dragonfly on Instagram. Ooh. Awesome. Timmy Dragonfly. I'm always trying to figure out different ways to fill time at slow areas of tattooing throughout the year, period. And I was just wondering if we could talk about uh, different ideas, figuring out different revenue streams, things of that nature. Thanks, guys. Love y'all. I like it. Short and sweet. Yeah, I I love you too, Timmy. Timmy's a great guy. For those who don't know him, Tim Grounds, Timmy Dragonfly. Uh, Fantastic, fantastic guy. He's uh, somebody that I'm uh, honored to call a friend for sure. Man. So he's asking, if I'm right, things to do kind of like besides tattooing? Is that what he's kind of... In, in like, you know, the de- we're all programmed to believe that fucking November, December, fear. What do yeah. they say? Rem- Look it, out. Remember, remember, yeah. Yeah, remember, remember, November, December. December yeah. yeah. Um, which... Yeah, I might be getting fucking V for Vendetta confused with that saying, but who knows? <laughs> but yeah, he's just saying when it gets real dead and the holidays are upon mm-hmm. us that um, other revenue streams, like yeah. when it's slow for tattooing. Yeah, you know, that's something I think we all face. And uh, I, I'm somebody who loves to go into painting, you know. I'll really dive into painting. I'll really dive into my clothing line, my you know, T-shirt making stuff. Um, not everybody obviously has access to that, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're all artists, right? We're creative, so mm-hmm. it's, a, it's just a matter of thinking of what can I do, especially if you can still go to the shop, right? If you can go hang out at the shop and be around the tattoo vibe and just start drawing, and you can work on a sketchbook or you can work on, um, you know, many things. Build a podcast, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So, it's called Tattoo Guardians also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and to our listeners, podcasting's super easy and super simple. But yeah, what do you guys yeah. think? Like, like, for me, I'd say my go-to is painting, right? That's going to keep me creative and keep me kind of uh, just kind of going, moving forward. I have a slew of answers, but I'm going to wait. Okay. Let's see what you got, sir. Sell drugs. <laughs> oh, you tried that. Yeah, that yeah, well, be... it didn't work for me. I'm giving well, suggestions to our listeners. you the number one rule. You got high on your own supply. On your own supply yeah. Well, depending, that could be debatable on okay. the number one rule. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, it's the holidays, you know, and it's taking up time when you aren't tattooing 
that you can stare and pet the wall. So I'd say it's a win-win. Good. Do you have a but serious it, answer? The same as you, re- okay. ultimately, because like... When he asked that, I was about to ask, what the fuck is that? Right. What's slow season? But also... Um, and I don't know if you've ever experienced it. Probably not. But I have, coming from someone that was uh, understands where he's coming from and what he's talking about, to then transitioning to like not even fucking letting that shit be on my radar and staying focused. Like um, I just have my head down and I'll look up and it's like springtime again. <laughs> right. But if you have to live the remember December more than one December, you're doing something wrong. Right. If you didn't learn through one or two slow seasons of December, like, man, shit's slow. Why is it? And we can point at all the exterior reasons why. Wouldn't that cause most brothers to figure out? Because guess what? There's going to come another December next year. And and am I just going to buy into the story that we're just fucked every November and December? I say no. Yeah, you just get get self-programmed and you just just expect it. And ultimately, you make it happen. So you are right. Like... I say painting, yeah. but it's not like I really have time for that. You know what I mean? Right. So, And this isn't talking down to any of you listeners that are still um, in this boat, and even the gentleman that posed the question. But there are answers that can get this settled in your life once and for all. Number one, it's the art form of building relationships and how you book your clients. And if you can go hard enough in september and october you should be able to ride to january every fucking year you know what i'm saying it's literally kind of like how a, landscapers do well i'm just saying in ohio it's at building least. a clientele to where you're fully booked in the fall to where the inquiries you get in the fall you book them for no november and december don't wait on november and december to start tackling your books and building those relationships be out in front of yourself to where there is no slow season and in, in how we operate there's no difference between a tuesday or a saturday a july or a november income return tax time or not like the way we've set it up it's there's fuck, however many days a week there's seven days a week however many days an artist at our shop tattoos four to five stay so booked out in front of ourselves now there's tactics to that and we teach a lot of that in tbm um and i don't know uh it makes me uh want to help our brother tim <coughs> really grab hold of the things that we we taught in tbm to really implement it in your life so that this is never an issue again right now i'm all about he brought up other streams of revenue you know we're all about that you know josh was texting me earlier today uh, earlier today about investing right so we're open to multiple streams of revenue that is outside or beyond what you do with your own hands in the form of a tattoo and even a painting now if we do josh does bring up painting cool thing about painting is you can do the piece once and it can generate revenue for you over and over again in the form of prints, even in clothing and t-shirts, right? Isn't that called evergreen? I mean... No, no, I'm not making a pun, a joke. I mean, Mm -hmm. pun intended, but isn't that what evergreen means? Evergreen means, yeah, you create a product that keeps selling for you over and over again. So Yeah. yeah, someone could turn a piece of art and make it go evergreen if there's just unlimited prints forever. Most artists put even a a cap on how many prints they're even releasing this is one of 50 or you know what i'm saying whatever the case may be so we know that painting and art can be a second another stream of revenue clothing t-shirt anything art related right or outside of that you know whether we've been looking investing getting into crypto even though the whole market's crashed right now it's a great time to get in no other tattoo yeah we know other tattooers that are starting to dabble in real estate and you know um, nfts i'm nfts i know at aisle nine we started the 20k club and this was a couple years ago when we were all growing i was helping the brothers grow and getting their books um all booked out and then their money right and their self-worth and their value right putting proper value on themselves and once they got that then we challenged them 
Who can save up 20K cash, put it aside that you won't need to touch for the next five years? You remember when we did that? Mm -hmm. And I challenged four of us in our shop to do it, and I was shocked at how quickly all four dudes joined the 20K club. And at that point is when I started looking for investments for us all to put our hard-earned cash into some sort of investment with a good ROI. So now our hard-earned tattoo money is working for us while we're asleep um and i was even look at looking at investments do we each put our own 20k in or do we want to put a five of us put our 20k in together right. and make a hundred thousand dollar investment together in terms so we're always open to that i love that you're thinking and again sometimes even thinking like that as a group as a family as a shop owner as a squad that we're stronger together um but i guess that's a good is, is because I could get on one. That's good enough for tonight and answering that, would you say, Josh? Yeah, and I, I love everything you said. Um, these are some of my favorite things that I've learned from you. Uh, yeah. One that took me a while to really put it into action is uh, the art of relationship building and just mm. how incredibly important that is, you know, because you'll, you'll hear me talk about how important it is to have your tribe, to have your people, and that's exactly yeah. what the art of relationship building is. So oftentimes I will hear about it. I will hear a tattoo artist complain, man, when I'm out eating lunch with my family and somebody wants to talk about tattoos, I'm like, fuck off. You know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, you want to obviously you're with your family. I get that. But you can take a yeah. minute to give them their business card, give them some niceties, yeah. the bedside manner, because you never yeah. know if this person yeah. end up being a great client on multiple different levels of right. revenue stream. Right. Right. So the art of the right. art of relationship building is paramount in what I'm doing nowadays, and I've always yeah. kind of been that way. But I've uh, because of, because of music, that's why we go on tour. You as well, you know, you know that Matt. Yeah. You go on tour yeah. to get these new fans. You ultimately want them to be real core fans, so they will listen to your music. It's not a money grab. It's it's, it's an actual like. I know everybody's like we're all one big family, but it's kind of like that, right? It's like yeah. our people, yep. our circle. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I really, really do like that. And then, um, and then, you know, obviously the multiple streams of income, you know. Um, yeah. And I love the 20000 I love all of it. Like the, the, the 20000 yeah. Club to show people because so many people couldn't even fathom that. You know, yeah. but when they put their ideas into action, you, it sounded like you said it, it happened kind of quick. You, you've, given them, you've given them a superpower of realizing, holy shit, I really can do this. It's not just something that Matt can do. I can do this. Right. Right. What a blessing. Yeah. So, yeah, I yeah. think that's a great answer. Big time. Big time. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, because I could. Get this is your wheelhouse, I know, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. When, when did, does it have the date when that question came in? Was that a recent question? That was July 11th. Okay. So, pretty recent. Okay, cool. Very cool. And, guys, we're not talking about, like, we're talking about being booked out through november and december we're roughly talking we're not talking about the whole world like if you want one great client a day and work four days a week well that's just 16 clients for the month of De november and 16 for the month of december you can break it down in what josh always says in manageable ch manageable chunks it's just four people a week when you start projecting but here's another thing if you're taking on larger pieces or upselling them or, or making the piece better. If someone comes to you for, you know, a five inch by five inch piece, but you being the artist can turn that, make it way cooler if you even turn it into eight inches that basically if it may need a second pass, a second session. Now, if you're booking people out for the month of say September and they're all session one, well, I don't know how quick you guys bring people back. I have everyone on an eight-week rotation. When, I touch, when I'm done touching them, I let them heal for eight weeks before I bring them back. But I usually put them in the books while I'm wrapping them up that day. And so now everyone's just on an eight-week rotation. So if you get a month's worth of them, they're coming back in two months. The next month you do that again, now you don't have to get new people it's the same clients from the past two months all returning. So again, there's things you can do in the month of September and October to just make sure November, December, you're already full. Yeah. You know, there's once so, you poison, so many things that can be once done. Once you poison the well with the idea that 
that's just that's the slow season that's just the way it is well guess what right that's what you're going to get yeah you know you're right and i remember years ago in the beginning of my career when i was at brenner's shop man and it was november and i was the only one tattooing and i remember brenner came walking in with all these canvases and paint brushes and paints and lined them all up and he was having everybody do like multiple paintings and was going to do a big art show and i rem and even though that was exciting and cool i remember feeling like extra weight not knowing how the fuck and when am i going to have time to do these paintings because i'm fully booked and i remember pulling him aside almost asking him like well what's the expectation is this mandatory like why are you loading all this extra uh stuff and he turned and looked at me and he's like well matt you don't have to paint a painting but what you don't realize because this was my first year tattooing November, December become real dead. All these dudes are about to not have anything to do. So I'm giving them something to do. And that, and I, that was my first time learning about it. And I was fully booked. And so I didn't paint one painting, but everyone else did. But I could tell, like you said, Josh, it was pre-programmed, accepted, and accepted as if this is fucking just law. And so that was everyone's reality. Yeah. But I wasn't able to accept that reality on day one, and I've never been able to since, and that's what I teach others to do. I now. fucking love so that, I, man. We know it's possible. Brilliant. Yeah, Absolutely brilliant. I love it. <clears throat> Happy day. Okay, Mike. Thank you, brother Tim. Tim Grounds, we love you, man. Yeah. Yeah. And we know Tim really just posed that question for the rest of our listeners. He it was probably, just rhetorical. He, you know, yeah. yeah, but still, <laughs> remember, there is always the option to sell drugs. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. That's, that's my next T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hips help and inspire people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Helping. Heroin is powerful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we got, Mike? All right. Next up is Chad Pope. Ooh. All right. So I have an idea that just hit me like a ton of bricks. And it's because my wife is such a huge part of my life and has been such a huge part of this whole journey for me through Tattoo Business Mastery that she's been right there by me through it just as well as a lot of other wives and husbands and boyfriends and girlfriends. That's what I would like to hear. I would like to hear, like, I know y'all have done the wives of, you know, the Tattoo Guardians, um, I want to hear from TBM wives and husbands more. I think that would be really fun to hear from all the different spouses and hear their point of view of how this journey has helped them along the way. Watching from the sidelines or, or sitting right there beside them through the whole way. Because I know that, you know, through that whole time, Aside from being the mother that she was, Taylor was right there along my side learning from me and getting more and more and more interested in realizing, you know, this is her world too. She's part of this. She's in this world because this is my world. This is our life. And our whole lives revolve around my inner work, but our whole lives revolve around our relationship. And I would love to hear how everyone else's lives has flourished and how their relationships have flourished. I think it would be fun. And I love y'all. And I hope you have a lovely night. Love you too, Chad. Oh. I also think some <laughs> follow-ups on some conventions, and that's just because it's hot on my brain. I just did my first convention at Hunts Vegas and got the absolute honor of getting to see so many TBM brothers and sisters and so many others in real life in the flesh for the first time and definitely not the last time and it just started a whole new journey for me and a whole new kickstart in my ass that is going to be so much damn fun man like holy shit I fucking love my job dude Nice. Jay, Chad Pope's on fire, y'all. <laughs> love it. Love yeah. that. That's exactly what we need. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. 
and his gratitude knob is he pinged it on 10 and broke it I, off. I do like that he had Darth Vader breathing in his microphone while he was talking. Yeah. However, he pulled oh, that yeah. off. <laughs> that was my first thought. I was like, oh. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've we've touched on that, like we you know interview, interviewing the wives, like you know, Matt's yeah. wife uh, is more hands off. Yeah. Uh, my wife yeah. has always been right there, really. But you know, for t- t- together twenty two years, I think she sat and watched me tattoo for twenty of those years. Which you know, now that she's learning into tattoo, she's extremely good right off the bat, and that makes sense yeah. because, although not official, she's been kind of apprenticing for twenty years. You know, yeah. so there's definitely yeah. a, a something there. We've always called ourselves mm-hmm. a team. Uh, mm-hmm. Your wife or your husband doesn't have to be like that. Matt's got a beautiful marriage that works on a different level. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, yeah. Hip, I know that uh, your wife's kind of been really even back in the day. You know, it was it was always a team with you guys, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's always um, had my back and Isle Nine's back and whoever I'm at the convention with, convention with's back. Um, I will say that. Uh, um, it's funny he brings that up because we just got back from the Cincinnati convention and there was like a big gathering of TBM and then Matt did a seminar um, like he was saying like the 11th hour uh, people started signing up and some people came from Chicago um, shout out to uh, Jake O2 Cold because he came with David Liebert yep it's Jack and he brought <clears throat> Jack O2 Cold he brought yep. Tara with yep. him Tara and, was a sweetheart. Yeah, they all, all of them were. Yeah. Um, and the point I'm making is because she wanted to see what this shit was about that uh, him and Dave were in because um, she could hear it in the background and would kind of like sit in distantly and but see that it was like taking effect. And what I'm talking about, it taking effect, is like the TBM classes that they joined um, so she came all the way with them from Chicago, which isn't a, a quick drive. It's like seven hours uh, and got to sit in on Matt's seminar. And um, after the convention was over, we all went out and had dinner together. And like she acknowledged what TBM was doing for their relationship mm. and for his tattooing, her tattooing. Um and other people, Jason Rhodes and, and his wife, Sheila? Yeah. Sh- Sheila or Shelly? Shelly. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's so many people, man, to uh, to remember. And each of them are special. Um, but, God damn, there's a lot of fucking people. Um, yeah. See, and that's and the I appreciate art of, it. That's the art of yes. relationship building. That's exactly yes. it. All these names you're talking about, I'm like, oh, yeah, I talk to these yeah. people on a regular basis as well. You know, we're all yeah, building mm-hmm, these yeah. awesome relationships. We're like-minded, and it's fucking yeah. working. It's fucking working. Yeah, yeah. You know? and it's so beautiful. And, yeah, I mean, what I was hearing Chad Pope suggest maybe do a show on, and we could talk about if we ever wanted to, was hearing from the wives or the spouses or the husbands of uh, TBM students because it's impacting them, the TBM students, but the trickle effect that it's had in every area of their lives, even in their own relationship with their spouse, Chad, you know, brought up his wife, Taylor, who went from maybe being on the sidelines to now all in with him. Mm-hmm. It has united them and, and sparked up their vision together and their communication. I mean, Josh, before he joined TBM, it was actually his wife mm-hmm. that gave him the final nudge to do it. Yeah, I, mean, I told right? her about it. it, kind of expected kind of a... Well, let's look into it. And she was like, "This just sounds like it needs to happen." And I think I yeah. paid. I think I paid in full within an hour of uh, talking to right. you. Right, you did, yeah. and it was fucking awesome. And so, and so, Chad, you know, he's on fire, and he brings up, you know, most of our listeners that know nothing about TBM may not appreciate or even know like the depths of what we're talking about here. And so, we can decide if we ever wanted to do a show about the impact TBM has, the trickle effect. And we're already seeing the fruit of it, and it's just been absolutely beautiful. We love you, Chad Pope. Thanks for calling in, man. Yeah. Big time. And then, yeah, and then he does bring up another episode idea is us almost doing like recaps of certain shows in the country <laughs> that we've either been to or that Josh throws, um, which is a fun idea, too. Like you said, we just got back from Cincinnati. That was an amazing show. He was talking about Hunts Vegas, Rock's first ever show. That was amazing. 
you guys did the 208 in Boise, mm-hmm. you know, Evergreen, another Evergreen's coming up. And so, yeah, when we do shows throughout the year, maybe it would be fun to do a fun recap report mm-hmm. of the show here on this show. So I like the ideas. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Who else we got, Mike? All right. Next up is Kurt Jacobson. He's a sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> and a fucking badass artist. He's a really talented artist. Yes. He's out of Illinois. I think it's Unbreakable <laughs> is the name of his studio. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, so fuck you, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Hey, guys. Love you. Love the show. Listen to you all the time. My question is, or something people might want guidance for, including myself, if you are trying to have the courage to increase your rates and you start to feel discouraged by the amount of clients saying, uh, no, too expensive, uh, how do you continue to have the discipline to hold forward? Uh, And then more importantly, what exercises do you do to help promote the type of work that you want and to sell yourself? Again, love you guys. Thanks for everything you do. It's a great question. And it's it's great that it's coming from him because, and I don't know if there's something we're not seeing, but like the work he does looks, like I can see it and just know it's his work. The way he does that fucking single needle shading, or I don't even know if he does single needle shading, but it definitely looks like it, but it's very fun. Um, And the way he draws his characters and stuff, it's just... I appreciate it and I fucking love it. So it's like he's got he's a he's one of those artists that's like you, Carlton or Brenner. Like I can just see it and know whose work it is. Yeah. Um. So I appreciate the question and it's cool coming from him because you know I think that you know he's arrived and you know hear him pose the question is like yeah he's still tr- struggling so I appreciate that <laughs> staying, for sure. Staying humble, staying hungry. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, the I, one who's the most certain will win every time. When you show up to a consultation, the one that's the most certain, right? And this, Kurt, this is just back to you owning who you are and how you operate. Um, it may seem simple. How do you stick to your guns? By sticking to your guns. Mm-hmm. But it's back to the inner work and you being completely certain in your name and who you are and your worth and as you are because what a lot of guys don't see and this is hard to teach is what we attract and repel on an energetic basis if if internally we're not certain about who we are and our prices but externally we're hoping our books to be filled and we're hoping there is some power energetically and so many people are blocking their ideal clientele energetically or in the spirit if you will and almost holding them off from ever reaching you all because of what's going on on your insides the opposite is true once we get certain and excited about who we are and how we operate and we may not know who but we know this is who i am we may not know when but this is what i do and i'm putting this bitch and sleeve on somebody who's the lucky somebody i'm certain about that we can also attract those people and be certain about it into our lives who we are now meant to serve but remember kurt as you grow there's sometimes growing pains and some people will only be down with an expired version of you when that happens it's not time for us to shrink back and fall back it's time for us to step it up and stay in integrity as you said with who you are and how you operate and keep working internally to honor yourself and to be certain about who you are and in that certainty God, source, the universe will reveal unto you the how and bring the right people you're meant to serve in droves. Kurt is now a current student of TBM, but we've only been through the first couple few weeks, right? So more is coming. But there's something to being certain on who you are internally because that even affects the energetic field. Not to get too woo on you all, um, but it matters. 
Well, and you know, it's cool that he brings that up because like I can feel where he's coming from. Me like, too. Yeah. The um, a few months ago, I went through like this big long dry spell. Like I was still doing pieces and stuff, but it was like seemed few and far between and you know i talked to you about it and was like trying to reevaluate like what is it what is it and like the the conclusion i came to or that i get to see now in hindsight right so fucking hindsight's so cool like that that it's only cool when you can see it after the fact but um i just needed to hold space and stay in integrity with who i was and continue to say this is me this is who i am and not take it personal when they would get sticker shock or didn't want to fuck with me or whatever. And that was cool. I just had to let it ride. But like the beauty that came out of doing that, because like people, um, I can only speak for myself, so I I ain't going to say people, but I always had a weird personal relationship with money. Yeah. So I want to people please. And I want them to like me. I also really want to do the fucking tattoo, but it's like, at the end of the day, if I was to waver for any of those reasons and fall out of integrity with self, I would be stuck living and reliving that regret that I didn't stay aligned with who I am and who I said I was going to be. Right. And that's very haunting versus like, oh, you didn't book uh, a couple tattoos for a few months. Instead, you chose to hold space. And I have. And now it's to the point it was like so overwhelming. I'm like, I don't even want I've got too much now because I only like booking out two months all year. And <clears throat> it's getting to the point to where it's like it's getting a little tougher to juggle. Um, and I believe that that came because I chose to hold space and stay in integrity with myself and my rates and with my clients, whether they take, take me up on it or not. Um, but yeah, there, there can be spots in that because my rate hasn't changed. I've had my same rate the last year. Um, and it just, in the middle there was this weird drought and i don't know if it was some time to like look for self-reflection to figure out what the fuck was going on or what because you did it you weren't able you said in hindsight you weren't able to look back and pinpoint what was maybe well off. i mean i looked at some things that could be the reason i you know i always check my communication first because usually when something gets messy or sloppy or lacking it's because of somewhere along the lines i've uh fucked up with my communication and it like wasn't that and I couldn't really draw any conclusions to what it was so it's like well guess what I'm just going to keep my head down saying who I am not people please and push through this because like more will be revealed and it'll all work out in the long run and it did yeah you know but it just doesn't feel good when you're in the midst of it you know right so that's what i'm saying hindsight and it was like now that 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 it's passed and it's happened it's like now i can see the lessons in it i couldn't see really the lessons even though i were looking for them um but maybe the whole lesson while i was looking was like just hold space then once i held space everything came full fully back to where it's supposed to be and everything's going um as smooth as it was before the the drought now i can see the lessons and be like oh okay well i can sleep better at night because i didn't whore myself out um for fear of you know having really fucking slow weeks or whatever um but because i chose to to do that like it, it just it panned out, I guess. If any of that fucking made any sense. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I thought that was a great question. I don't think I could answer anything better than you guys have. I thought I thought what you nice. said was spot on. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt, you're a powerful and like Kip said in the beginning, you're amazing an amazing artist. And so own that and step into being that. Um, you know, we've talked before the difference from have, do, be versus be, do, have. Most people think I can't be it yet because I don't have fill in the blank, enough followers, enough clients, have enough clout, whatever. I need to have a certain few of these things first. Then I can start doing the pieces in at the price points I really want. And then I can be the artist I dreamt of being. And that's backwards. We must be it now. 
and once you decide to be it internally so fast forward to your dream life taking the pieces at the price point you want with the clients you want well, and and pretend to be that artist and that man now well what would he do today how would he operate be like him and you will find you will actually start doing those things way quicker and have it all way quicker it's be do have um and i know this is just a podcast so i know that sounds simple uh I don't want to fall into a whole teaching here. This is just to remind you and encourage all of you, your best life, your best scenario. Be it now in your head and operate from that place. If you were already on that level, what, how, what would your day look like tomorrow? What would you be up to? What would your presentation uh, look like? Um, what would your menu look like on your Instagram? What are you serving up? How busy are you? Can you even take on any more clients? Be that person now, and you will start doing and having way, way quicker. We love you, Kurt. Yeah. That's K. Jake Tattoo from Illinois, right? Yeah, Thanks yeah. for calling in, brother. Who else we got, Mike? All right. Next up is Chuck Day Tattoos. I believe he had one on the last one, but this yeah. is a newer one. This is a newer Chuck, one. Chuck Day. Yeah, and yeah. He, he was on the last one. He's back with another. Maybe this is our first troll. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't utilize your skills as a Michael Jackson impersonator to blow up your TikTok game, you're really fucking dropping the, bra the ball, bro. I mean, fuck a Michael Jackson ship. Your hair. A suit, some fucking pointed toed shoes or something. I think you probably kill the game. So uh, keep that in mind. Peace. <laughs> Is he talking to me or Josh? You. you. Me? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because remember you shared. I yeah. Was, you right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you just got told. I'm saying. <laughs> Step up, son. Man, <laughs> hell yeah. Man, I gotta start. I gotta do the Michael Jackson shit, and Josh has gotta get some glow right, sticks. Right. And do something together. <laughs> it's a fucking new hit TV show. Hell yeah. <clears throat> My God. You about to say something, Mike? Oh, I mean, do you want another one? Sure. Right. <laughs> oh, That's how we gonna do him, bro. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. Shit. Um, yeah, let me think about that. That would be funny. Now here's a clip of Matt dancing. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next up, this one is just uh, written to us, but I think it's really good. It's from Stevie Turner. He says, "Hi guys, thank you so much for your podcast." I listen to it every Monday here in the UK. I'm truly grateful f and inspired by your thoughts. Nothing but positive energy and love for myself to you guys. Over the episodes of creating abundance, charging more, and increasing your ceiling, I feel that these talks are aimed at realism artists. I personally don't like realism, but I appreciate it, but it's not for me. How can we apply your messages to tattooers and not tattoo artists? I love tattooing, the craft, the history. I don't want to spend all day tattooing fur on a lion, lol. <laughs> Just a random thought from a UK to tattooer, all the very best. That's fantastic. Awesome. I never really thought about it like that. I, I feel like it wouldn't matter, right? It's either you know, it, 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 universal truths, but me, yeah. you know, because I mean, obviously, you're probably going to do more pieces because I don't think traditional necessarily would take as long. I guess some of it certainly would, yeah. but yeah. I, I haven't really thought about that. What do you guys think? Yeah. Well, I, I want to hear more on, like you said, universal truths, just a little elaboration on what you were talking about with that. But also, I'm just sh acknowledging some gratitude that we got motherfuckers from the UK writing us. That was my first the other thought, day. Too. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. The other day, fucking Mike showed me all the countries that we're listened to in. Mm -hmm. And granted, you know, maybe in Japan, like seven people are listening to us, but still, like, Fucking people know who I am in Japan. It's right. fucking dope. It's amazing. Super grateful. So thank you, dude. And I agree. I do not want to fucking tattoo fur on a line all day either. Blah. 
people. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, elaborate like universal truths. Well, when Josh was saying universal truth, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, you know, in my uh, in my seminars, we talk a lot about something called u- universal truth for every artist. Uh, these are things that you can teach. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're doing realism or watercolor or traditional. These are these are universal truths. I.e., contrast is super important, right? Yes. Tattooing yes. correctly. Yes, I'm going to tattoo something that looks like it's a watercolor painting, but I'm not going to bullshit it and tattoo it like I'm doing a watercolor. I'm going to tattoo it correctly, which really leans much more in the traditional sense of putting ink in at the correct level, correct speed, proper healing, not being a dumbass. Right. Yeah. So a good example is, is, you know, kanji used to be extremely popular. And so you're, pay, you know, it's a brush stroke. Right. We can't make a brush mm-hmm. stroke with our magnet. We can't just automatically make it. We have to make it look like a brush stroke. That's a universal yeah. truth across the board. If something's to look like an oil painting, you still have to tattoo it the same way you tattoo a, a skull and a ship in traditional manner. You know what I mean? So to me, the only difference I'm really seeing is the lion taking seven hours versus you how many traditional tattoos can you do in that seven hours or does it ever take you seven hours obviously a back piece you know large pieces but universal mm-hmm. truth here would be you should still be able to up your rate and and yeah. own yourself of who you are yes. right matt i mean i don't yes. feel like it should really matter that's it, right and it i doesn't and i think he's hung up on the day rate yeah mm-hmm. thinking like well if i'm a traditional artist uh none of this piece is not going to take me all day so, so break now, up your day rate what is a yeah. day eight hours or so divide right. that and that's your hourly rate now love it love it right it's not about the day rate it's about you and like what josh was talking about knowing yourself putting proper value on yourself and you're allowed to pick what's actually going to make you happy and mm-hmm. feel tickled to death. Obviously, the name of the game is the when we talk about your abundant life is working on clients that you actually love, that they love you and see you and appreciate you for you and what you do. Secondly, is actually getting to put out work that you're passionate about. You're excited to go into your portfolio, a piece that you're actually excited to do today. That brings joy, does it not? And then thirdly, putting value on it that honors you and all the blood, sweat, and tears that you've been through just to take you and bring you here to this place today to even be able to do this piece you're excited about doing, putting proper value on yourself that you feel good about. And the, and it, the number don't matter as much as you having those three things set. Good client, wonderful piece, with proper value and i know that is depending on what scales you're using is situational or subjective right but a lot of times in those previous talks it was from a framework of most artists have a weird emotional connection around money and Mm -hmm. devalue themselves and don't put enough value on themselves shoot themselves in the foot now you're climbing up an uphill battle on a person that don't fully appreciate you but they couldn't because you didn't fully appreciate you out at the gate that's what we were talking about right whether you're a traditional artist or you're doing fucking fur all day long for a flat rate it doesn't matter because the dude that's doing fur all day long for a flat rate wants to be that artist wants to be that guy yeah and that's what josh is saying with universal truths when we speak abundance into your life that's true for you even if you're just even if you're doing ed hardy pieces all fucking day long and i like josh that you brought up decide if you were doing one and that's a side note too i'm still looking for you traditional artists why don't you blow your shit up and do a big ship oversized right why do traditional pieces all have to be palm size with a bunch of stars in between which is rad as shit but why not fucking blow up and we see traditional piece torsos and back pieces that will now lunge you into an all day rate or more but no matter where you're at the type of art you do and what you're putting on that brings you joy you're fucking passionate about it put proper value on that josh brings up if you were to have to if someone wanted to buy your time for the day what would that dollar amount be now if you're going to do three traditional pieces in the middle of that day divide your day rate by three 
and there's your flat rate for that piece. Or like Josh said, there's your hourly rate. But if, you, if you're going to do three traditional pieces in a day, you know, let's say if your day rate is, let's see, uh, 1500 well, now your traditional pieces are 500 right? If you're going to do three of them in a day, just throw a math at you. You're the creator. You get to choose. The point is you're worthy and you're worth more than what you've been letting on. And there's power in you owning that and knowing that. And the right people will be brought to you that will actually put some respect on it and appreciate you because you fucking finally decided to. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, and like on a, this may seem like a judgmental level, but I'm not devaluing or discrediting anything because I fucking love trad work. But in the eyes of, I don't know, an art artist, right? Just because your work is quote unquote simpler than doing a fucking realistic tiger portrait doesn't mean that it's any less valuable. I would gladly pay five hundred dollars an hour for oh, some absolutely. dope fucking trad. Yeah, don't yeah. let no, don't no, let your no work question. be. Sorry, I got you redone. Yeah, yeah, don't let your work be devalued because it's traditional. Like, man, I love right. you know me. I talk about it all the time. I just love good tattoos. If you're out there yeah. doing good tattoos, fuck realism. I don't give a shit what it is. If it's good and somebody wants it, you get your yeah. worth. That's right. I got this little fucking uh, katana with um, cherry blossoms, and. Uh, a coworker gave it to me. A coworker, keep in mind, and she gave it to me because she calls me her sensei, uh, and I paid a thousand dollars for that. Right here, it's three inches. No fucking way! How long that take? Fucking she held a gun to your head. Hour and a half. <laughs> hour and a half. Yeah. And you paid a thousand dollars. Yeah. To someone that tattoos in the same shop as you. Oh yeah. Yep. Love it. Love. Yeah, just because we work in the same house doesn't mean that I don't care about fucking her paying her own bills and feeding her kids. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, um, it's there's people out there. I'm not just like bragging or boasting, you know, because I'm some fucking somebody. There's yeah. people like me and even more like me. There's people out there that want tattoos from you and the dopest trad pieces and because you don't charge ten thousand dollars a day, they won't even fuck with you because you ain't even at where they're at to even want to get a tattoo. That may sound fucking mind blowing, but, but it so is true. so fucking true. <laughs> so so true. fucking true. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of a fucking story, and this is a true story. And this is I may botch it, but this is the gist of it. Was there was this uh, woman that owned a jewelry store, and she had a certain like uh, necklace that just sat in the jewelry case for weeks on end and wasn't selling and she was leaving to go on vacation right and she kind of fell in the land of lack with this jewelry piece and before she left on vacation she wrote like the manager a note just to get rid of that piece to cut the price drop the price in half cut the price in half on that jewelry piece somehow there was a miscommunication the manager read the note wrong and thought she asked him to double or triple the price and so he did only for her to come back home and it had sold and and she's she thought it sold because she told him to like cut slash the prices until she saw the you know the receipt or whatever and realized oh my god there was miscommunication he sold that for three times the price of what it was when it was just sitting there you know and what they realized was the second they put more value on that thing like triple the value that thing became more valuable to people and people wanted it mm -hmm. it's the weirdest fucking happens thing. all the time <laughs> motherfuckers are paying for fucking dick sickle nfts for thousands and thousands of dollars why wouldn't they pay people are paying right now in the metaverse fucking plots of land yeah. for yeah. thousands yeah. of hundreds of thousands of dollars why wouldn't they pay for something tangible in the flesh that they die with exactly out here Last forever you've only got one left arm you know um, and again, it's you knowing your worth, whatever that is, to put proper. So the only thing, you know, so to make the distinction, because I feel like you threw the baby out with the bathwater, feeling like anything we've 
taught on this show wasn't applicable because you don't do fur all day as a day rate realism artist. And we're here to say, oh, contraire, not at all, sir. You put proper value on yourself. We fucking salute you traditional artists. 100%. All three of us. Yep. Because we're all three, we're in the land of realism. We fucking salute you traditional guys. We love and support you and want you to put proper value on yourself. And we got your backs. And Hip will even pay you $1,000 to tattoo him for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Great question. Thank you, our UK brother. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah Cheers, mate. UK, that's Cheers. Amazing. So good, man. So good. I want to hear... <clears throat> From one of our seven people in Japan, please call in. <laughs> right. Yeah. Who else we got, Mike? So this one's from Jeff Barshinger. Barshing. Barshinger. Barshinger. Jeff Barshinger. There's no G. Barshinger. There's a G. Oh, okay. My bad. Hello, Tattoo Guardians. Jeffrey Barshinger here, aka Tattoos by Jeffrey needle name screech because i look like that dude from saved by the bell my mentor and the shop guys gave me that name not me anyways could you guys go over when you should quit quit tattooing please i'm an apprentice but i have a son now and i'm not feeling like i'm progressing just doing the same beginner level tattoos doesn't seem like i'm getting any better while other apprentices i see at other shops are getting better my mentor says i'm on the right track but that's like your mom telling you you're handsome I also should mention I do not enjoy tattooing while I'm doing it. I like I I don't like people at all. I get angry when females call the shop and ask for stupid tattoos. Oh, me and my free three friends want this quick small tattoo. Yeah, that's not really a quick small tattoo when it's three people, you know. I'm nervous to no end while I'm tattooing and it almost doesn't seem worth it, you know. Like the most enjoyable part is at the end when I'm done and don't have to stress anymore. It's a good feeling when it looks good. But it's just a relieving feeling when it turns out okay. And I think that's only because I'm two and a half months into this apprenticeship. But um, I'm getting nervous, man. And it's not the pros and cons aren't weighing out. But I'm sure that's just, you know, because I'm starting something new. I just need some guidance from experienced guys like yourself. Please um, you help me out if you can, you know. I love being at the tattoo shop in the atmosphere, dicking around with everybody. But who doesn't, you know. Um, I was an apprentice before, but I had to quit because I ran out of my savings, so I know what it was like to have something and lose it, and that what motivated me to get the apprenticeship I have now. But I have to be realistic, man. It's 2022, prices are going up. I could get a full-time job, but it would mess with my tattooing. So I'm at a tough spot here. When do I quit? When should I pursue something else? Anyways, thanks a lot, guys. You don't have to use this if you don't want to, but at least go over the question, you know, stumble upon the the topic for a little bit of when you should give it up i know it's early you guys are probably thinking wow two months in this apprenticeship and the guy's thinking about quitting already but i mean i got a family man i gotta freaking put bread on the table <laughs> i'm making money but i'm only making ends meet and uh i don't know i'm just kind of kind of scared dude i want to be a good dad anyway you guys uh give me a shout i'd appreciate it love the love the podcast later on Dude, I'm really appreciating this question and the one, all, all the questions, but it was great. Yeah, that's a tough one for me to think about. Like, there's a part of me that almost wants to say tattooing is not for everybody. Maybe it's not for you, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, two, two and a half months. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Ask yourself if your heart is really in it because... Tattooing is your life. It's your whole life, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, not to be a dick. Two but and a half months ain't shit. Right. So things could change. To but. even gauge anything, you know. And he's talking like, oh, you know, I'm not progressing. My mentor says I'm doing good. I'm on the right path. Like, you know. But I feel like that's your mom telling you 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 can do right. You're handsome. Right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, where where's his expectations, and what? made him decide he needs to put anything on the scales measure himself at all at the two and a half month mark right like you can get real discouraged if you start measuring yourself prematurely Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's like a freshman trying to measure how much he can deadlift against the seniors 
but he's just a freshman. Two and a half months in his freshman year, and he's comparing himself against the senior fucking all-star team mm -hmm. and get discouraged. Well, that would discourage anybody. Right. For starters. But, Josh, I'm sorry. I cut you off, man. Cause you were no, about I'm just to... trying to figure out, like, I don't want to sound like a gatekeeper here, but does everybody deserve to tattoo? I don't know. You know no, I mean? like, and the cool thing and is... And what I'm hearing you say, Josh, is, like, not with that attitude. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you. It kind of, kind of bums me out, man. You know, it's like, yeah. this is my life. This is my passion. Like, look how 33 years and I'm still hungry. And that's why I want to meet up with you guys because we're like-minded. And to hear somebody, like, I get it. I mean, I've had down times too, but I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe it's not for you and you should... Uh, you should, I don't know, maybe you should really think about a different job, you know. Probably just made somebody mad, but I, I, I get a weird feeling about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's a maturity thing, too, right? Yeah. Because in a way, it's like almost a kid in the back seat that's asking, are we there yet? And we've only been on the road two and a half miles. Yeah. like you got. Or you know, we're on a 12-hour trip. We're two and a half hours in, and the kid in the back seat's like, oh, my God, should I have come? Are we there yet? But my question is, on a 12-hour trip, who told you to even start asking at the two-hour mark? Right. Or for you to even be bummed that we're not there yet at the two-hour mark? Who told you to even that we you would arrive where you're trying to be in two and a half months? Yeah. This is a fucking 12-hour trip, and you want to start bitching in two hours in. That's a maturity thing. I feel right? like if, I feel like if I were his mentor. I'd be like, I'll tell you what, man. That sounds to me like you need a break. A really long break. Maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe you should go and uh, stock some shelves at Walmart for a while. Nothing wrong with any kind of hard labor. But yeah, I don't know, man. I guess it, maybe it's my 33 right. years. I'm getting a little grumpy. But it's maybe not everybody deserves to tattoo. You know? And I got some mixed feelings. And, and, you know, that's all right because you said it best, Josh. Tattooing chose you. Tattooing chose me. Tattooing chose Matt. You know, it It you know, it you know, might let a couple and motherfuckers same, in and ride a little bit. Yeah. But it's going to weed you out eventually. And even though it chose us, we too chose it. And what I'm get, and then it chose us again. And then we hit other, like, rough patches, and we re-chose mm -hmm. our commitment. We've been committed to this, not, and everything hasn't gone smooth, right? And he's in the season that it's shit like this and thoughts and feelings like this that are either going to weed you out or not to show you and the rest of the world, do you really got what it takes or not? You Did you think this was going to be fucking easy? Like, what were you expecting two and a half months in? Exactly. Are you already thinking about quitting? Well, this is the type of shit if, if that will weed your ass out. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know? I had, I had but kind of, yeah. I had old school bikers telling me to fucking kill myself. I'm battling fucking cancer and chemotherapy. Am I talking about quitting yeah. tattooing? Fuck no. You know? Yeah, right. Like, right. what? I don't know, yeah. man. It's like, I'm just going to stop yeah. from getting pissed, but... <laughs> <laughs> right and what josh is saying like if things get rough things get a little tough and that's when you're gonna fold well then that's why he's saying maybe you ain't cut out for this right yeah i get it you then, gotta provide, but if you, you gotta, are yeah 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 he, you know he's got a baby he's got to provide we get that's that right. evan was an apprentice and worked fucking a full-time job as a barista at starbucks right and i get it because you know Hey, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. So the fact that you've got a healthy dose of fear, he said, look, I got a baby. I want to be a good dad. I'm scared right now. I need to be a provider. That's a healthy fear, but you should use that fear to fucking press in harder and quit complaining. Yeah. I you, you're, you're full of complaints right now. Even the fact that the phone's ringing, you ain't in the game long enough to even complain about them girls calling exactly. in. You should be thankful that them fucking girls are calling in, man. Who the it, fuck are you? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's part of what it is. It's like, you motherfucker, like, I, I, I tattoo once a month if I'm fucking lucky. I, yeah. I, I, that's taken away from me something that I yeah. fucking love and I put my whole life into. And you're mm. looking forward to the tattoo being finished. I would kill to be in your position, man. You know. And mm. and, and check it like that. That you're. It's a dangerous game when like, you know, like Josh was just speaking on the tattoo to be finished because you want it to be perfect. I've got two pieces um, from Joshua Carlton, and I'm sure if he looked at them, 
he's going to point out some imperfections in them. They're not perfect. No one's tattoos are perfect. Like, welcome to the club. Exactly. Dude. Like, you will not do a perfect tattoo. No one will ever do a perfect that's tattoo. Part of the, so back part of the, the yeah. thrill of it, you know, part of the chase. That's right. And so back to hit him when he said he doesn't even enjoy the process, right? So that's something you need to look at and figure out why. And if it's just because you fucking don't know what you're doing yet and you're scared and this shit's permanent and you know it's not going to be amazing because you're not amazing yet because you're still wearing diapers, it's only two and a half months in, give yourself some room. Welcome to the club. Welcome to being a tattoo artist. And I got news for you. That don't ever fully go away because you grow from level to level to level. And we're signing up for shit today that it's like, got to put our big boy pants on. I'm scared as hell. Fuck. I hope I can pull this off. So we do understand once you get to the end of it and you wipe away and you're like wiping your brow, like, whoo, I pulled that off. But there is a, some beauty about going through that fire. Mm -hmm. you know exactly. what I'm saying? That's part of the journey. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And so if you don't enjoy the process just because you're not awesome yet and your fear, you hang in there and fucking put your nose to the grindstone. Keep putting in the reps and that which you can't do, that which you're scared of doing, that which is uncomfortable will eventually become more comfortable. You'll get better at it by putting in the reps, but or this is the season that will take you out and you ain't even supposed to be here because you couldn't hack it in the beginning. Totally up to you, but you got to be honest with yourself as to why. If why you don't enjoy the process isn't on the reasons I already dropped just because you're not awesome and it's scary, because we get that. But if it's even if you start to get good at a piece, if you're still not enjoying the process, well, then now you just got another J-O-B that you don't like. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. This way you got to be real. Jobs. Yeah. It's just jumping yeah, yeah, around, yeah. you know. Yeah. And this is where you got to be honest with yourself because we can guide you, right? And hopefully we are guiding you with some like real truth here, just shooting you straight. But you got to be honest with yourself. Are you on here asking those questions like, woe is me, hoping we just encourage you to not give up? and almost like an attention grab oh dude hang in there you can do this nope right and obviously we're not just gonna give you that Josh because we like, care right. about you and tattooing right but uh, you know like you said pulling the hoe card well then fucking quit yep if that's what you want to do but if it really came down to you tonight to where if your mentor said quit and quit would you really want to quit you know or, or is it something like it almost needs taken from you again for you to realize, oh, actually, I do want it. Yeah, I mean, check, check, once. check, yeah. peep, peep this out, dude. You're being on our podcast to the world and being lectured by Joshua Carlton and Matt Clemmer. Like, that's fucking dope, dude. Like, <laughs> you're here for a purpose on purpose. Live into that fucking purpose. Seven yeah. people. Quit being a fucking pussy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All seven people in Japan. It takes a lot to piss. It takes a lot to piss Josh off. Though. You did it. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and the he it, the anger. It's it's not even anger. It's passion. He, yeah. He's he's put so much into this for people like you to come to come into this and fucking grow and make it even better. So like, let's do that, dude. Make tattooing better than you found it. Well, Fuck, you found yeah. it. So here's leave it better than right you found. We it. did not know what these fucking phone calls were going to be. <laughs> here's proof, <laughs> you know. Uh, but be honest with yourself. If you don't want to hang it up, really, if you're because look, we all hit seasons where we feel like hanging it up. I don't know about two months in, but we all hit the seasons, right? And then we got to keep it 100 and be like, look, we all hit rough patches, but that's when we just fucking dig in and keep going because we're drawn to the vision. There's a purpose behind this. And and so what I'm getting at is, fuck, if you really want this, don't, the, the biggest thing that's not on your team is your own fucking perception, your own attitude, being too quick to complain and give up, which is why Josh is saying, ooh, maybe this ain't for you, right? But if it is, you need to fucking Get out your own fucking way. Be on your way, not in your way. Right now, you're in your fucking way with the way you think 
and see it all. Um, man, if you, you know, because man, it took me three years to beg for an apprenticeship. The fact that you got one, the fact that you got a mentor who gives a fuck, Twice. the fact that you're already making some money, right? <laughs> you know, the fact that someone believes in you, um, and obviously your, your, your family too. I mean, your apprentice, don't fucking let them down. You want to be a good dad? Don't give up on you. Don't be so quick to give up when shit gets rough. And if so, because guess what? Being a dad's tough. Real fucking tough. Life's fucking tough. What do you want? Do you want to be a tattoo artist? Fucking roll your sleeves up and turn your gratitude knob up that anyone's fucking calling in. I don't care if they're girls wanting matching tattoos every day, all day. And fucking fall in love with the fact that you get to have the honor of being a part of the rest of people's lives and someone took a chance on you while you still trying to learn how to walk, right? Uh, like an attitude shift or, or not, you know, but yeah, like you know how say, you five years yeah. is going to come. Five years is happening whether you're tattooing or you're complaining, That's right? Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. where do you want to be? That's right. Right. And kind of like what you were talking a minute ago about your rates. When you decided who you are, this is the new season you're stepping into. This is the pieces. And for you to fall back on that was not worth it. you rather weather the rough season yep. than to fall back on your laurels because now you're living out of integrity. You're living a lie like I'm a chump. I'm a punk. And you wouldn't stoop to that, right? If you were to go quit tattooing, go get another job. Well, first of all, if you do, try and find one you'll like and actually enjoy that's going to be a good provider. But if you do go get another job, will there be a part of you that kind of feel like you punked out, you bished out? And what's going to be your story? You had two apprenticeships that neither lasted longer than three months. Man, you look, know, like, dude, fear weighs ounces. Regret weighs tons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. And so who knows? I don't know if this message, like, oh, it's the, going, it's going to hit, <laughs> is encouraging or not, you know. Uh, but if if we're tr encouraging you to do anything, is to be honest, quit being a fucking bitch, quit being a complainer, right? And fucking man up. Do you want to be a tattoo artist or not? I mean, you're talking to dudes that have like poured their lives into this. We've been through so much. It's as if like. We resurrected a whole city with stone and brick by hand, and you like carried two rocks, and you're like, "Man, this is hard." You know what I'm saying? We're like, exactly. what? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> don't be uh, the don't be the victim your whole life, man. Don't do it. No shit. No shit, man. man these calls are fucking great. <laughs> you know, I hope our listeners are enjoying it just like we are. Um, and it was awesome well, to Josh have. Josh ain't. <laughs> well, yeah, like, he I was at the this. beginning. <laughs> he, he's going to text us tonight like four in the morning. Like, I still can't fucking sleep. <laughs> so to all our listeners, thank you guys so much. And please continue to write in, even, even with things like this. Like, we appreciate it. We love it. It gives us something to talk about and to bring you into our show. Yeah. Yeah. and sit at our table with us. Yes. Um, and we appreciate it. We appreciate the cups of coffee, guys. Each person that keeps buying us cups, we appreciate you. Hell yes. Okay. Well, I want to give a quick shout out uh, to Nathan Underneath. Man, Nathan, he was at Cincinnati. The watermelon and, man. Oh, Nathan's fucking golden as fuck. And uh, his apprentice, Griffin. Uh, and they, Josh, they play us in their studio on a big screen on the YouTube for all of their clients. Awesome. You say and on the YouTube? Yeah, go on to, the YouTubers. I'm going to the Walmarts. <laughs> <laughs> they play it on the television. I'm going to watch the Netflix. <laughs> they play us on the YouTube. My, story, my stories. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because I guess they got a big bass and uh, Griffin was saying how like Nathan will play us because certain clients will come in and love one of our episodes then they go away to heal up and they don't listen to us until they come back for their next session That's and cool. then the client's like hey you know those guardians uh, podcast we were watching last time do you care if we watch that again nathan will be like yeah there's five new episodes out since you've been here and they'll watch all five all day but griffin's like that bass will thump the whole 
deal. And sometimes <laughs> it'll give Griffin a headache. So I wanted to shout him out, Griffin. If we give you a headache today, and Nathan Griffin, we love you both. Yeah. You guys are fucking awesome. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. This has been fun, boys. Yeah, glad to be back, like I said. Oh, so glad you're back, Josh. Big time. Big time. And yeah, so as of now, is it true? We've gone through all of our messages. Yep. So if you're a listener, there's so many people that you probably thought, I'm not going to send my message. Um, you know, they're probably flooded with them. Well, here's your proof. We're not. Go ahead and send it. And uh, I don't know, maybe... Uh, Maybe tonight helped you learn what to send and what not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We love you all. I love you, Joshua Carlton. Love I you love too. you, Mike Sherno Yatsky. I love you, Hip. We love you all, Guardians out there. Let us all leave one another in tattooing better than when we found it. Hell we'll yeah. see you all next week.